the world's most popular plane, the Boeing 737, looks pretty unremarkable. Unless you really know your commercial aircraft, there isn't really a key feature of the 737 that gives it away. Except for these. Why does the 737 have these misshapen engines? Let me explain. Most 737s in operation today are powered by CFM-56 engines. They were first introduced in 1984 with the launch of the 737 Classic, whose three variants include the 737 300, 400, and 500. Just three years later though, the CFM-56 also found its way onto the A320, Airbus's own narrowbody jet. And just six years after that, Airbus tapped the same engine again to power their Quajet A340s. Having one type of engine power multiple planes is not uncommon. What's unique about the CFM-56 though, is that only those found on 737s are designed with this hamster pouch engine inlet. The genesis for this odd design choice actually predates the CFM-56 by nearly two decades. Back in the 1960s, when the first 737s were being developed, air travel looked much different. For one, airport infrastructure wasn't nearly as robust. Nowadays, nearly every airport has conveyor belts to aid in the loading and unloading of checked bags, but in the 60s, most didn't. As such, Boeing designed the 737 to sit low to the ground. This would help baggage handlers to load and unload bags quicker in turn, reducing the plane's turnaround time. The first 737s built in the 60s and 70s were equipped with JT-8D engines. These engines were relatively small and fit snugly under the 737's wings. However, their small size, particularly at the air intake, meant they had a low bypass ratio. The bypass ratio is one metric that helps to determine how efficient an engine is, with the higher the ratio, the more efficient the engine. In essence, this ratio describes how much air is flowing around the engine's compressor stage at any given moment. For example, an engine with a bypass ratio of 30 to 1 has 30 parts air flowing around the compressor stage for every one part of air that flows through it. For reference, the JT-8D had a very low bypass ratio of 0.96 to 1. When Boeing decided to revamp these jets in the 80s with new engines, upping that bypass was absolutely critical. The best way to do so was by increasing the size of the forward fan. However, since the 737 was originally designed to sit so low to the ground, Boeing was having trouble figuring out how to fit them under the wings without running the risk of hitting taxiway lighting and low-lying debris. This put the aircraft manufacturer in a tough spot. Keeping the engine small enough to comfortably fit under the wings would put the 737 at a major fuel burn disadvantage to its new competitor, the state-of-the-art Airbus A320. And most other workarounds proved costly. For instance, efforts to make the landing gear longer would have resulted in a complete rework of the 737's undercarriage. However, one workaround proved to be fruitful. Boeing instructed engine manufacturer Safran to design the new engine not with a smaller fan, but with an outer casing and nacelle that were asymmetrical, lifting the engine's underbelly to provide the proper clearance. For those of you who might be wondering, no, the fan itself is not misshapen, it's still perfectly round. It's just the casing that holds some of the engine's external components that is. And yes, this hamster pouch design actually makes the engine less efficient. The airflow into the engines is not as uniform as it would be had they gone with a round nacelle, and the bulges create additional drag. However, the efficiency gains made by having a larger fan substantially outweigh these aerodynamic drawbacks. At the end of the day, this design choice has played a big role in helping the 737 become the ubiquitous airline workhorse it is today. If you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.